enjoy like even a day, do they? Not like one day. You can't go through 24, 36 hours of feeling good about the Pittsburgh Pirates. You know, good morning to you. Good Monday morning. I'm Dan Kovacevic of DK Pittsburgh Sports. This is Daily Shot of Pirates. Comes your way bright and early every weekday. And on this particular weekday, from San Francisco, I should have been able to offer you some, you know, upbeat vibes after what still in all turned out to be a pretty good weekend for the visitors here at Oracle Park, taking two of three from the best team in Major League Baseball. But no. Nope. Eighth inning comes along. Frazier's gone. Wilmer Defoe's out there, and you're going, "Uh uh-oh. It takes only a few minutes before the texts start coming in. My sources tell me that Frazier's been traded to the Padres, and there it all goes. (laughs) Just like that. Just like that. The initial instinctive, I think, reflex that comes along when a trade like this happens is to look at the the returns and try to find hope. Hope is something I talk a lot about as it relates to fandom. It's all built on hope in some form or other. As soon as you lose hope, you've lost fandom. The Pirates received three prospects, a shortstop, Tukapita Marcano, an outfielder, Jack Sawinski, and a right-handed pitcher, Mitchell Miliano. And out of this group, Marcano, the shortstop, is the only one who was even in the top 30 of the Padres prospect list. Marcano was there at number five. Now, he's got some promising tendencies, chiefly being just 21 years old and already having at least gotten a cup of coffee in the majors. And in the minors, most recently, meaning in AAA, he slashed 272, 367, 444 with six home runs in 199 plate appearances. And that's also encouraging for someone who is universally expected to be able to stay at shortstop meaning he won't have to be bumped around because he can't handle the position defensively. And that's it. That's it. That's it. The guy who leads the majors in hits has more hits than anyone on the planet at the highest level of the sport was sent to San Diego for the Padres' own number five prospect, meaning they kept their top four guys, and two guys that aren't even good enough to be in their top 30. I I could get into all kinds of details and tell you how San Diego actually has a very deep system and blah, 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 blah. And a lot of it would be accurate and worth considering. And I'm sure I'm going to get to that point sometime soon. But right now, my reaction isn't to the exchange itself. My reaction is to looking at the changed circumstances since December when the Pirates initially were trying to trade Frazier to what's happened now. Because the circumstances are, in fact, changed. Brian Reynolds has blossomed into what looks like a a star. Brian Hayes all along has looked like he could or will blossom into a star. Jacob Stallings has become unquestionably his throwing error here aside yesterday. Actually, that was more of a miscommunication than a misfire. The best defensive catcher in baseball. 
So between those guys and Frazier, and then let's just say one other spare part because every team's got like, I don't know, a Ben Gamble in left field, right? Like every team's got one. The best teams anywhere have one of those guys. So let's say now that you have five of your everyday eight already in Pittsburgh and they're somewhat younger. Frazier himself is only 29. You have some of the best defense being played anywhere, particularly in the infield. And you just say, nah, you know what? We were going to trade this guy back in December, and they were offering us a bunch of stuff then. So we're going to try to trade him again now anyway, even though things have changed to a degree. And let's just see how it turns out. Oh, wait, look, they're offering more than they did in December. Well, let's take that. Oh, and by the way, let's take this trade return now. Now, six full days before the deadline. Because, I don't know, I don't know, maybe it's because we're already here on the West Coast and it would be more convenient for Adam to just drive down Interstate 5 and meet the Padres in San Diego. I have no idea. Why would you make the trade six days in advance of the deadline when some other team could see their second baseman blow their knee out or something and have a desperate need and say, listen, we can think big here. We can we can go to Pittsburgh and get the guy who's leading the majors in hits for a sport that values playing the percentages and the value uh, and, and, and the in, intrinsic importance of the most minute details involved in playing the percentages. How do you just say heck with it? Heck with it. Because the Padres would put you under the gun, like take it or leave it or we're out of here, bucko. We're going to take our number five prospect and our 230 pluses and go deal with someone else. <laughs> like, what happened there? There are a lot of questions. A lot of questions about this trade in the days and the weeks to come. And remember that anything that you hear from me is coming from a guy who has l not liked but loved almost everything Ben Charrington's done to date, both in terms of approach and execution. And this one doesn't pass the sniff test on either front. Lots and lots of questions. But the number one question will be, are these players any good? Because if these players are good, then the Pirates win all the arguments. Then Charrington wins all the arguments. It's going to take us a while to find that out. But for right now, approach, execution for me. Wow. Failing grade. Failing grade. Don't like this at all. When we come back, just one question. Just one question that's always brought to you on this program by the good people at North Shore Tavern, directly across Federal Street from PNC Park, home of Steak on a Stone, home of the planet's only fully dedicated Pittsburgh Baseball Club sports bar. I'm talking memorabilia, wall-to-wall, -wall, floor to ceiling, just baseball, 365 days a year. Come on down to North Shore Tavern question comes from BK who asks would the trade have been better if Dwayne Underwood Jr. was sent as well yes this would have been a complete winner <laughs> you know I, I, I feel obligated to at least somewhat discuss actual baseball because it was a pretty neat weekend here at in San Francisco. The Pirates played very good baseball, 
competitive baseball, uh, fired up baseball a lot of the time. They caught the ball, they threw the ball, they hit the ball, they did a lot of things really well. Right up until Dwayne Underwood took the ball. Hey, if you're going to have accountability on a serious note, and you're going to DFA Kyle Crick, and you're going to be demoting other guys left and right, this guy is nothing special, to say the least. He's been hit up for 16 runs in his last 11 innings. A lot of those by way of long ball, and I'm underplaying the kind of contact he's given up. Even his outs tend to be bombs. There's no reason for this guy to be on his staff. But look, when you're having this kind of discussion or debate after a, a weekend like this, generally speaking, and, and again, I'm purposely trying to set Frazier aside here, they played good ball. They've been playing good ball. Now, whether or not they can keep that up without Frazier, I am deeply, deeply skeptical. I don't see it. I don't see it. This was not an overall strong offensive team to begin with, to be kind. Never mind that they're leading the majors in batting average for July. A lot of that just walked right out the door. And Wilmer Defoe is not going to be your guy that makes up for it. This is, between this and Tyler Anderson and Nutra Rodriguez, who absolutely should be traded, that, those are the guys that you need to have in that bracket, not just doing it to do it. it it's going to be rough the rest of this season. And I'm one of those people who believes that that matters. This is not St. Petersburg, Florida, where you can just be the Rays and just do whatever you want and not worry about the repercussions because there aren't any because nobody cares about you. In Pittsburgh, people get mad. You know, in, in Pittsburgh, people get mad enough to do something about it, meaning, you know, deliberately not go to games. They don't stop caring, but they'll deliberately not go to games. They'll deliberately not watch the games. I know that sounds like not caring. It's not the same thing because the default mode is to care. As we see every time the Pirates have even a slightly promising stretch, people will jump back on board. They like it. They want the Pirates to do well intrinsically. They don't want the owner to do well. They want the team to do well. And this, this, um, this doesn't make it any easier. But you know what? It, it's all going to add to the storyline. It's all going to add to the storyline. I appreciate the question, BK. I appreciate everybody listening to Daily Shot of Pirates. And we'll do another one from back home tomorrow. <laughs> Hey, everybody, thanks for listening. Please subscribe to our DK Pittsburgh Sports channel, and don't forget to hit the bell to get notified every time we post a new video or podcast.